there in front of you, and hopefully you can read that that font. Uh, as we get started this morning, I want to I want to first say to you that discouragement is an equal opportunity offender. Uh, nothing keeps you from experiencing it. Not your education, your appearance, your age, your nationality, your financial position, your relationships, or your level of Christianity. It is an equal opportunity offender. And, and two of my favorite Bible verses on the subject of discouragement, 1 Peter 5, verse 7, the New Testament, says, Cast all your cares on him, because he cares for you. And then, uh, the, the one I think, uh, I thought I was going to hear this morning from someone uh, that kind of started out in that direction, Psalm 55, 22, Cast your cares on the Lord, and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Yeah. Hallelujah. Sometimes, friends, when we're reading these great passages of Scripture, especially from our heroes like Peter and, and David, uh, we think they never experienced a, a valley in their lives. <laughs> we think they lived on the mountaintop, you know, just communing with God and being fed by the ravens. <laughs> Uh, the, the rest of the story is uh, they, they lived real lives and, and, and experienced deep valleys just like you and I do, attacks and evil, and, and they live in the real world just like we did, just like we do. Uh, one, of, one of my favorite heroes of the Old Testament and all the Bible is, is, the, is Joseph, son of Jacob. Uh, started out his father's favorite son, which caused all kinds of other problems in the family, right? Uh, hated by his brothers, beat up, left for dead, sold into slavery. Um, goes into slavery and as a slave, gets exalted to high position, uh, comes out of slavery and, and, uh, and moves into uh, other great exalting that God does in his life and becomes second in the command to the most powerful nation on the earth. And the thing that we need to remember about Joseph, you guys, is that through all the ups and downs, some deep, dark valleys and some great, wonderful mountaintops, he never lost his love and deep relationship with the Lord and kept walking with the Lord. And, and consequently, the Lord kept doing those things in Joseph's life to prepare him for where he was going to be. In fact, friends, uh, let's, let's just say it. God is always causing everything to work together for good in our lives, and he's also causing everything that happens in our lives to, he uses that to prepare us for what is coming, for what is ahead. So we are always in training, we're always in preparation, praise the Lord. Isn't it interesting as we talk about dealing with discouragement and, and the favor of God and the favor of people, isn't it interesting that, that the favor of God and the approval of people don't always hit on the same day? I mean, can I get a witness? You know, sometimes, you know, in our flesh we'd rather, you know, there never we, you know, never would be anybody that would say a cross word or look at us cross-eyed, you know, and and we'd always walk in the favor of God or at least feel like we were, praise the Lord. <laughs> but it doesn't always happen that way. We talk about another one of our heroes, the Apostle Paul. He knew a thing or two about discouragements and bad days. And 2 Corinthians 11 talks about the long list of things. You know, Paul probably... In, in a brief moment in his life, gives us this, this, this litany. <laughs> it's like, hey guys, I earned my stripes. I don't know about y'all, but I earned my stripes. <laughs> and uh, not, not the last stripes, but the, uh, yeah, okay. Uh, yet the Apostle Paul is credited for writing 13 of the 27 books of the New Testament. It's almost as if we could put the, the lines together and say, because Paul experienced the painful things that he did, he was able to be used by the Holy Spirit to give us our instruction manual 
or most of it from the New Testament. Yeah? Are you with me? What a, what a wonderful thing that God turned his challenges. And then the Apostle Paul writes this word in Galatians chapter 6, verse 9, that really speaks to discouragement. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Ladies and gentlemen, what a great word. Discouragement has a way of making us want to give up and, and wonder if what we're doing is of any value. But the Holy Spirit comes along and like in great passages like this and others and reminds us to hang in there. Don't give up. Keep on keeping on. In fact, someone has called it faithful perseverance, <laughs> where, we, where we tie a knot and hang on and we faithfully persevere because God has great things ahead that he's going to do. We don't know how many times Joseph and Paul and, and others uh, looked back on some of their discouragements, but the one thing we do know is they didn't give up. They didn't give in. They didn't compromise. They hung in there. In the middle of your discouraging moments, ladies and gentlemen. In fact, let me just say it to you. If you, uh, if you, you know, in fact, uh, I'm thankful that, that I have been blessed to be a part of the company of the cup half full. Praise God. The Lord, the Lord has blessed me with that deep down positive outlook that says the cup is not half empty, the cup is half full. <laughs> Thank you for smiling at me and giggling with me. Some of you here today may be feeling like uh, the cup is half empty, Pastor John. And some of you may be here today saying, I don't have a cup. What do you mean, half full or half empty? I don't even have a cup. <laughs> Somebody stole my cup. It's gone. <laughs> but, ladies and gentlemen, there are times when you and I, with the help of the Holy Spirit, with the help of a brother and sister in Christ, we, we stop ourselves and we say, come hell or high water, I am not giving up. I am hanging on. I'm, I'm going to stay faithful. I'm going to... Keep on keeping on. In fact, would you, would you turn to somebody near you and smile at them? Just say, give them a thumbs up and say, don't give up. Don't give up. Don't quit. You're almost there. Good things are coming. Praise the Lord. Smile. Jesus is here. <laughs> Hallelujah. So you guys, let me talk with you quickly about some steps when you're facing discouragement and disappointment. In fact, you know, uh, let me just say, uh, depression is real. And, and sometimes uh, you need uh, help, hopefully temporarily, uh, through your physician, you know, hopefully, hopefully you're not self-medicating. Uh, hello, don't do it. Sometimes we drive through. I don't know about yours, but sometimes driving through our neighborhood uh, at certain times, you can smell the fact that people are self-medicating, or you walk by somebody and you can tell they've been self-medicating? Let <laughs> me come back to the point, though. The point is, uh, Dr. God, Dr. Jesus is here. And, and he's the great healer. And, and uh, there may be times when you need a, a, doc, uh, a physical, medical doctor's help but hopefully temporarily so that you can get over the hump and get back into that healing that God has for you in Jesus' name.
four things I want to share with you really quickly. First of all, hold tight to your commitments. When you're walking through a dark time or, or feeling discouraged, uh, remind yourself in your time in the Word that God has not forgotten you. He's still working things out for your good. His love for you is unchanging. His pursuit of you and His provision for you is unstoppable. His goodness for you is a strong foundation that you can build your hope on. And when you think about the goodness of God in your life, it will give you the strength that you need to go on. Someone has said, and I think this is a great one-liner that you want to put in your notes. If not all of it, you can at least put down the last line. It goes like this. You cannot determine a person's greatness by their education, appearance, talents, but, but by what it takes to discourage them. Oh, man. I think that's a great thing for us to think about. And, and that, we, that we stop and take a moment from time to time when we're discouraged or experiencing discouragement and, and analyze that thing. Put it under the microscope or the magnifying glass and, and say and pray, Lord, what is it that I'm feeling? What, is, what, is, what has caused this? And, and help me to get out of it. Help me to bring the remedy, Lord. Bring the healing. And help me to, to get, get out of it. Don't. You know, the enemy wants you to become addicted to depression and discouragement. Yeah. That is not God's will for you. Hear me. It is not God's will for you to stay there. Praise the Lord. Okay. Amen. The second thing that I want to want to bring to your attention from the Word of God today is to let joy into your life. We've all, we've all suffered, haven't we? We all experience suffering, but it's, it's important that we let joy back into our lives, that we move beyond that season of suffering and that we, bring, that we allow the Holy Spirit and allow, uh, you know, maybe change as well some of our activities and some of our priorities and, and let joy back into our lives. Amen? And if you're around discouraged people all the time, guess what? You're going to get discouraged. It's kind of like that, uh, that Rhineyism that I heard uh, a while back that goes like this. If you hang around the barber shop long enough, pretty soon you're going to get a haircut. I don't know where you got that, Rhine, but I love it. And I think it's so appropriate to, to, to other areas of our lives. And there are times when, ladies and gentlemen, it's okay to, to tell people that are, you know, always a cloud looking for a place to rain, uh, that, that you're not available. <laughs> Can I give you another kind of funny one? Uh, and this comes from, uh, this comes from Daniel, friends, nephew Daniel. Uh, he was having uh, a situation with a person in his life that was always a cloud looking for a place to rain, always negative, always depressed, always discouraged. And he said, one day I just felt like I needed to say this to them. Uh, I love you, but I'm allergic to you right now. <laughs> Isn't that good? I love you, but I, I got other places I got to be right now. Allergic to you, <laughs> so, so, which which means you guys be careful not to let the joy stealers control your life. There are those that are addicted to their negativity, and we need to pray for them to get healed of that, get set free of that, walk away from that, and and get back to having joy in their lives. Amen. Another great truth, friends, is that whatever you're looking for, you're sure to find. And if you're looking for discouragement, the devil will help you find it. Yeah. And, and some other people will help you find it as well. And so make choices to focus on Jesus. Make choices to focus on the joy and 
the good things that the Holy Spirit wants to do in your life and choose to be led by the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God, then you will see a, a harvest of joy. Will you turn with me in your Bibles to James chapter 1? James writes so many powerful things led by the Holy Spirit, but in James chapter 1, beginning of verse 2, he says, Consider it pure joy. My brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. And even though you and I would, you know, on a good day would not choose to have more difficulties in our lives, those difficulties are used by the Holy Spirit to take us to some really beautiful and wonderful places, aren't they? Come on. The growth and the relationships with people and, and uh, the time crying out to God and receiving His healing, they are wonderful places that we only get to by some of the struggles and difficulties that we face in this life. The pure joy, I think, that James was talking about is not found in the pain of the moment. This is not some weird, psycho, weirdo stuff. This is, this is that the discovery of God's faithfulness through those difficulties is what James is talking about, where we will discover pure joy as we remember and as we are reminded of God's faithfulness as we walk through difficult times. Every test we have is an opportunity to fail, but it is also an opportunity to pass. <laughs> and with the help of the Holy Spirit, friends, we can do that. Praise the Lord. So let joy, let joy come into your life. Let joy. You know, and you guys, and, and there's, there's so much negativity, and there's so, so much uh, absence of joy out there. We as believers need, with the help of the Holy Spirit, to be people of joy. Amen. In fact, Arthur, if you'll let me uh, pick on you as an example. Better. You know what? He didn't give us a joke today like he normally does. But you know what? But we, we need to... Celebrate the gift of joy that Arthur brings. Yeah. In fact, I, yay, Arthur. <laughs> Some of his. What was that? <laughs> some, of, some of his great humor, I have to think about, you know, and a couple weeks later, I get it, you know, and then it's funny, but. Uh, but, in fact, you know what, if you'll allow me, my brother, uh, Arthur is part of the Fox Run Bible study, and, and he loves God, and he loves people, and I don't know if it was last week or a couple of weeks ago, he, he, said, he said to the group, you know, talking about joy and being encouraged, he said, you know, sometimes when I'm on the bus, I'll sing my song about flies just to make people smile. <laughs> wow. You know, and I thought to myself, I need to do something like that. You know, get a little uh, help of the Holy Spirit and, and a leading. <laughs> You're looking at me. Pastor John, you're, you're making me think about doing something really dangerous right now. <laughs> but if we will open ourselves up to joy, the Holy Spirit will come. He'll give us the strength that we need. He doesn't want you and I dwelling in the negative, and He doesn't want us to be without joy. He wants us to have joy. Amen. Amen. So maybe, friend, Brother or sister, if you, if, if it's been too long, 
go spend some, go take Arthur to lunch and he'll, he'll get you cracked up and he'll get you laughing again. Or find, find some good godly clean humor like that and, and get yourself out of the mully grubs or whatever you want to call it. In Jesus' name. Point three that I want to want you to look at in the Word of God today, friends, is keep moving ahead. Life has a way of, of trying to keep us roadblocked. Get us thinking that this moment in time is never going to end. And friends, we live in a very broken world and there's a lot of problems out there. Did you hear the the, the prayer list today. It's a long one. Yeah. It's a long one. And, and there are a lot of people suffering. And a lot of people in need of healing. And, and we serve a great mighty God that calls you and I to, to pray and intercede. And encourage them even in their valley. Even in their difficult time. And God wants you and I to do that, friends, and to encourage them to keep moving ahead, keep seeking Him. And, and let, me, let me share with you a great word of encouragement from the Word of God. Romans chapter 12, verses 11 and 12 say these very important words to us. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, Faithful in prayer. You guys, we're going to unpack this for a few minutes. But these verses remind us to keep on doing what God's called us to do. Keep on keeping on. Don't give up. Don't quit. God has great things. Can I, can I just also tell you that burnout and discouragement happen most of the time when we've let the spiritual fire burn down too low? And we need to get back on our knees in prayer. We need to spend some time fasting to break through. We need to get back into the Word. Uh, have you noticed that there are a lot of people out there that are zealous about things? Yeah. Do you know anybody in your life that's zealous about stuff? Uh, like, uh, you know, sports teams? There's a lot of people that are that, you know, that, that breathe, eat, sleep, and walk. <laughs> Their favorite sports team, and, and you know, and, and forgive me if, if I talk about it too much, okay? And, and I'll try not to, but but it's a great it's a great bridge, you know. In fact, let me give you a great great uh, uh, three point. Uh, one liner into having a conversation about Jesus. It's called news, sports, and weather. News, sports, and weather. And then open the door to talk about Jesus. But but there are a lot of fanatics about different sports teams. There are a lot of fanatics about car clubs. There are a lot of fanatics about this, that, the other thing. And, and we are called in Jesus' name to be zealous about God and His work and, and His love for people. Amen? So the question is not, is my zeal about my preferences or is my zeal about the things that God would have me be zealous about? Amen. So from these great verses, let's talk about it for a minute. First of all, as we, as we, uh, as we battle and, and talk through Keep moving ahead. First, this great passage in Romans 12 tells us to be joyful in hope. Joyful in hope. How many of you know that, that hope is a very powerful thing? Yeah. It is. In fact, medical studies uh, suggest that hope improves physical and mental health and speeds healing. Uh, hope feeds your joy and hope will bring you things that are very, bring you two things that are very exciting and it'll bring you out of things that will try to destroy you. But our hope, ladies and gentlemen, is not based on feelings. It's not based on situations. Our hope is based 
on the solid rock of Jesus Christ and him crucified and risen again and coming again. The second point in Romans 12, verse 12 says that we are to be patient in affliction. This is a tough one for us sometimes. Can we talk for a minute? There are those that are probably headed for a big crash that say affliction is all in your mind. Are you with me? There are those that say a, a believer is never to have an affliction. That's, that is a lie from hell. Those people that preach and teach that are going to have to have a little sit down with the Apostle Paul when they get to heaven. <laughs> Who prayed three times for a thorn to be removed and God said, ain't going to do it. My grace is sufficient. And, and that same message is for you and me, ladies and gentlemen. Not that we have to, you know, fall in love with our affliction. No, we, we are to pray and believe God for it to go away and be healed and all that good stuff. But there are, there are afflictions that come. We, we live in a fallen planet. Can I remind you, it's not just Portland. <laughs> it's not just the state of Oregon. The whole planet is fallen full of disease and sin. And we're going to bid this ball of mud goodbye one day soon, and we're going to live in the new heavens and the new earth and the, the city of the new Jerusalem. Hallelujah. This is, this is don't, don't get distracted here. This is just temporary. Praise the Lord. But because it's fallen, it has its afflictions, and, and we have the the instruction from the Word of God to be patient in it. Patient. The third thing that the Holy Spirit invites us to do is to be faithful in prayer. Joyful in hope. Patient in affliction. Faithful in prayer. How would you describe prayer to a child? You don't have to answer me. I just want you to think about that question. And, and let me answer for you. You'd keep it really, really simple. Guess what? God wants you and I to keep it simple. Sometimes we try to make it too hard. Amen? God wants you and I to understand the simplicity of the power of prayer and to apply it. Faithful in prayer probably looks different for you than it does for me. It probably looks different for everybody. But God, I believe, wants to keep it simple. I, I've got a great illustration for you. There are a few people in this church that know where I keep the candy stash in my office. I'm not going to tell you where it is, but there are a few people. <laughs> there are a few people in this church that know where that is. You know where you know where God keeps his candy stash? Prayer. Boy, was that simple or profound or what? His, his candy stash is spending time with you in prayer. And in those times, he hands out the almond joy. Hallelujah. <laughs> Sorry if I didn't mention your favorite, the Snickers, the, the Twix, you know, uh, the, the, the Nutter Butter, you know, the, the old, uh, all, of the, all of the goodies, you know. In fact, you know what, as we get ready for Monday Fall Festival, uh, will you, <laughs> yeah, 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 if you're, yeah, uh, what, Balance uh, and, and don't don't uh, don't sugar yourself out. You know, don't go into a coma. Uh, moderation, moderation. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, our, my parents would, would, would have three different bags for Herb, John, and Errol in, in the freezer. And our name would be on them, and we could only take out one item after, after uh, October 31st per day. Put it in our lunch sack. All right. So, so whatever you have to do to keep yourself out of a coma. Uh, okay, all right. So, you guys, uh, God loves to spend time with you. And as you are, are able to get out of a negative time, spend time in prayer. Patient in affliction. Joyful in hope. Last thing that I want to talk to you about is always trust Jesus. I, I started out this morning talking to you about God's faithfulness and, and that he wants you to know that, that you're never alone. And, and I want to just reiterate that. God is always with you. He always wants to continue to be there. And, and, uh, and feelings are not facts. Are you with me? And although uh, feelings are real, uh, they're not the best, best foundation to make decisions on. And if you find yourself, you know, in the thick of or in the, the heat of the pressure to make a decision, maybe uh, take, a, take a break and, and uh, get along with God and pray and, and, and take a breath or two or three more and find a place where you can get out of the heat of that decision or heat of the pressure, so that you can make a godly, Holy Spirit-led decision. And you know what? There are times when we need to just stop and, and try to figure out what's going on. The, the enemy will try to you know, force you into this, that, or the other thing, but, but it's important that you and I take a break from time to time and just say, Lord, I need you to just help me, guide me, direct me. Our, our Lord Jesus has made a lot of wonderful promises to us. One of my favorites is found in Matthew 28, 20. It goes like this. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Friends, Jesus has made that promise and he will not ever break it. He is with you now. He will be with you always. And he invites you to always come back to trusting in him. Always remind yourself, it's not you that you're trusting in, it's him. Let's pray.